Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Rock and Roll Junkyard. I am Nikki, and today I'm going to be doing the first rock and roll restoration of this old axe. I picked this up at a yard sale for about five bucks. Looks like it's a, uh, you call that a jersey pattern head. You probably can't see this on the camera because the lighting is not very good, but it actually has phantom bevels in there which add a whole nother level of beauty and also help prevent it from sticking. So uh, we're going to get started on this and by the end of this video, or part two if it takes too long, it'll look like a whole new axe. So let's get started. Right, so there's a better look at it. You can see those bevels I'm talking about. Ah right in here up in there a little bit of mushrooming on the pole but nothing too bad it's got just a slight slope to the top of the head um, so yeah first things first I'm gonna cut off the old handle with a coping saw There's the old handle. Put that in the bucket of old handles. Alright, this is what we're left with. Just the head with some wood sticking out. Now I gotta get creative about how to knock that out of there. Now let's see if I can just knock it out of there with a using a bolt. There's a punch and a trusty old smith hammer. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking this bolt, using it as a punch, I got this in my vise, I'm coming in from the underside, pounding what's left of the handle back out of the head. So, set it on there. There is no easy way to do this. If an axe has been hafted properly, this is going to be the hardest part of the whole operation, is getting that piece out. And you can see we're getting there. But it's a process. Okay, so I chiseled off some of that wood. So I can grab a hold of that, whoop, grab a hold of that aluminum step wedge with my vice grips. And uh, I hate aluminum wedges myself. So now I'm just going to try to shimmy it out of there. We'll see what happens. Well, that was easier than I thought. So that's the wedge there. Just an aluminum step wedge. It's kind of a shorty, but boy, it was working, I tell you. So the rest of this should pop out pretty easy. I've been wrong before. Alright, well my workbench, which was never built for or intended to be a workbench, started falling apart. So I have these pressure treated, I don't know if I've got 5x5s or 6x6s here. So I got them separated with the hole in the axe head in between them. And I'm using that same bolt. And I'm just going to keep pounding it. Because if I pound it on the workbench anymore, which, like I said, isn't even a real workbench, it's just going to fall apart. So, here we go. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. And this is going much quicker. Because the ground is not absorbing the impact that the workbench was. Alright, let's see if I can get this in one more strike. Boom. Boom. Nice and clean. Right. Now, as previously stated, that should be the hardest part of rehafting an axe is getting the old one off 
if it was done right. Because if it was done right, it's not supposed to come off. Look at my finger. Look at it. Okay. Here's what we're left with. Now, I don't see a maker's mark on this, and I've surged high and low. And I just don't see one. I think... Well, it was painted blue at one point. You can see just a few flecks of blue paint. I think it might be a Collins. I don't know if they ever made this style. I'm not sure. So, next step is we got to clean it up. Get all that rust and dust and dirt and schmoo off of there. And we have just the cure for that. White vinegar. None of us. in the bucket. Top with vinegar. Then you have a lovely pickled axe. We want it just covered. In fact, if I was thinking, I would have brought something under the box like that. And then I wouldn't have had to use as much vinegar, but some days I'm not smart. I'm going to leave that in there and check it here in an hour or so. That should turn all that rust kind of a black color, and then it'll just wipe right off. And it'll also reveal the temper along this edge of the axe will turn black. And that's where the metal is tempered and heat treated. That'll also tell us whether or not it has a tempered pole. Although... Judging by the mushrooming on this pole, I'm going to say, yeah, it's not tempered. Well, it appears I was a little over-conservative on my estimate. This has been nearly 24 hours in the drink, so I'm going to pull her out and see how she does. I recommend wearing gloves when you do this or your hands will stink like vinegar, but I don't have gloves. Yeah, most of that's just rubbing right off. See what I'm saying about the temper? All that, so we know our temper runs right along there. And this rust is just coming off like... Alright, that was just a quick wipe, so... I'm going to take it inside, sand it down, and wipe it down a little bit more, and try to prettify it. Well, in helping prove what I've long since suspected, as you can see, there's usually nothing wrong with her day the spa won't fix. Now you can see, this is about five minutes of sanding. That's, you know, our ten minutes of sanding. There's still a little bit of schmoo in here, and... On the other side there, just a little bit of that blue paint left over. I'm having a hard time getting out of there. But overall, 24 hours in vinegar and a few minutes of sanding has done this one a world of good. Still needs a good edge put on it. You can see the last person to sharpen it. I obviously didn't know what they were doing. But, that's, uh, that's it for now. I think I'm going to sand down some of these uh, burrs there. Whatever you call them. Or file them down, anyway. Alright, well I think I'm going to call that good enough. At least for now. I might do a little bit more filing on the little mushroom there later on, but I'm pretty happy with that. So now we're going to affix the handle. Now when you choose a handle, you want to make sure, see the grain? See how they're nice straight up and down? Almost completely straight up and down. So that's what you want. You want them running with the blade not against the blade that's very important because your axe whoop your handle will break if that's the case secondly you want your handle to be bare wood see this when i bought this it was varnished that's bad that means it's going to dry out and crack sooner so when you buy a handle if you can't find one that's bare wood if it's varnished, you want to sand it all down. Affix, <coughs> excuse me. Affix the head to it, 
and then hit it with boiled linseed oil I'll go over all of that but for now we're just gonna try to stick her on there and see if she fits head on there. Then, make sure it's in there snug enough that I can fall off when you hang it upside down. Cover the end of your handle with leather so as not to mark it up. And just give it a little tap it, tap, tap. Oh, look at that! Now, check to make sure it's straight. Oh, oh, I see the problem. You can see the axe is actually thicker on this side than it is on that side. So, if you sight down it, well, let me try and do this. This is really awkward. You see how it's hanging just a little bit to the left. Just a little bit, so I'm going to try to fix that, and we'll bring you back. Well, I can't find a way to straighten that out. The axe is just... Oh, come on. Ah. It's just thicker on the one side, so it's not going to hang totally straight. Obviously, it's a cheapo, but still kind of cool. So what I did was I knocked the head up a little bit. Can you see, so there's nothing sticking out there like there was. And you can see if my stupid camera will focus. Focus, you pig. Focus! Okay, well, whatever. Maybe you can see right there, there's some curls from where this rubbed on the wood, curled some of that down. So, I'm just going to shave those down a little bit. Shave that area down with this little carving knife. Just to make it a little bit neater. Only do this where it was rubbing. Don't do it where it wasn't rubbing. Because that's not needed. And it's just kind of a silly thing to do. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Alright. Now, I'm going to do this again. Another. Tap it, tap, tap. as good as she's gonna get so I went back and repeated that process knocked the head up shaved some of the wood down knocked it down just trying to get it down a little bit further and I think it's about as far as it's gonna go you can see I missed a piece there so now what I'm gonna do is put it in the vise and cut just a little bit off of the top of this to try and help the wedge go down deeper then we'll go over wedging <laughs> go. Then layer of wood glue on the wedge. This is a poplar wedge. Every handle should come with one. I'm just going to put a little bit. Some people put linseed oil on the wedges before they put them in. I've actually had one come back out when I did that. So now I just use a little bit of wood glue. Try to get it centered. And it looks like this wedge is just a little bit wider than the hole in the axe, the eye. So I'm going to cut that down just by a oh, about a red hair. Alright, y'all didn't need to see that part, but I just ripped a little sliver off so it should fit now. I had to do that before the wood glue starts to set up. Should have checked that before I glued it, but some days I'm not smart. Let's 
for the kerf, which is the slit in the top, since I cut about that much off, the kerf only goes to about here. So the wedge is most of the way in already. I'm going to see if I can get it in any farther. And then cut the top. I'm pretty happy with that. Well, there goes my blade. Press that I can get with sandpaper. Alright, so after my blade broke, I sanded the rest of that. Now careful as I was being, it still got away from me and cut it down flush right here, which is why I decided to cut the whole thing flush. Really wish this stupid camera would focus. Anyway, all that's left to do is put the little step wedge in, so that's what we're going to do now. Hopefully you can see that. And there's gaps, just very slightly there. So I'm going to go right in between them. All right, hey, that worked out pretty well. Look at that. Focus. There we go. Now, if I can stop hitting the tripod, you can see how crooked that is. Let me see if I can get that a little closer and show you why that's happening. If you look closely, you can see how poorly forged this axe is. See how thin it is right there? How thick it is right there? So when you look at it head on, you can see it's a lot thicker right here. A lot thicker right here than it is on the other side. So for that reason, the blade hangs off to the left just a little bit. This handle is completely straight. I scrutinized this handle before I bought it. But if it's a shitty axe, it's a shitty axe. I bought it because it was five bucks and it's cool looking. Make a great wall hanger. You know, maybe good for splitting wood in a pinch, but this is not going to be my everyday user. I got those two in the car. I carry them with me everywhere. Now we're going to apply the boiled linseed oil. Take great care not to get this on your clothing. I just pour a little in my hand, in my glove hand, and spread it on just like that. Thin layers. Do not go thick with this stuff. You just want a good thin coating. All over. Especially the end grains and up around the head. If you soak the head, put it in a container with just like that much linseed oil, it'll absorb up through the grain and really help to swell that head. Because you don't want to use water or anything like that to swell to swell that. Pay special attention to the end grain, they'll drink up a lot of this oil. And that's about it for a first coat. You just want to... And this wood will drink this stuff up. And also, you don't want to get any on the head itself. Because it will dry to a sticky, gooey mess. Get a little bit. Right up there. Try to keep it off the metal. Then it gets on the metal, just wipe it off before it dries. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to try to...
I'll try to get some down in here. Take any of the excess. Rub the rest of the handle down with it. Try to clean that excess off of the actual head itself. I can't see the camera, so I hope this is all coming through. And then, oh! Any excess on the handle itself, just wipe off. Leave it to cure. And that's it. Just do that a couple times a day for the first day, once a day after that for the first week, once a week after that for the first month, once a month after that. Once you do it enough, it, most of my axes, my everyday users, I only oil once a year. Just a good thin coat, that's all you need. You buff off all the schmoo, you know, get some uh, steel wool or whatever, swipe it down. And Anyway, that's it. That's how you turn that rusty old crap into something functional. I'm not going to go over sharpening, that's a whole different video. This is not sharp. But, we'll get her that way. Uh, Alright, well there she is. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not going to call it a, you know, a full restoration, but more just fixing it and making it, you know, useful again. Uh, there are a few things that went wrong, um, like I usually like to leave the top of this just about an eighth of an inch proud, but I had to cut this one flush. Um, like I said, I didn't realize the head was so uh, unbalanced, so much more weight on the one side, so uh, that's kind of a bummer, but there's nothing I can do about that. So. That's it for now. Hope you learned something. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know because I got I got a ton of these tool projects to work on. I got I have a whole shelf of tools that need fixed. So, uh, yep. That's it for now. Till next time.